So we know the basic like cis or trans isomers. You can clearly see one is on the opposite side here. One is on the same side. I mean, this is quite simple to visualize in general. So this is not the tough stuff. But let's say you have these guys now. What do you do with these um, enantiomers? How exactly do you understand enantiomers? How exactly do you visualize? Because they're clearly more complex than those cis or trans isomers. And in this video, I'll explain exactly how. So before I get into the explanation of what exactly enantiomers are, I'd just like to start off with the definition of enantiomers. So enantiomers are a type of stereoisomer that consists of molecules that are mirror images of each other, but they are not the same thing. So, so this one is a mirror image of this one, but they cannot be superimposed onto each other. Um, you can clearly see right here that um, they cannot be superimposed. I mean, if you rotate them, you'll see that. But I'm not interested in the definition itself. I'm interested in helping you visualize this concept. So before we actually get into explaining enantiomers, I would have to explain what mirror images are to you. So when a molecule forms a mirror image, it is reflected across something. So let's say we're reflecting this molecule across this pen right here to make its mirror image. So we're going to take this molecule, let's just pretend this is going to be its mirror image. So we're going to take it right here and we're going to reflect it. And when it gets reflected, here is the mirror image of this molecule right here. And we can clearly see that all the mirror image was, was just flipping this molecule to this position. But in this case, the mirror image of this molecule is identical. So these two are obviously, they're identical. So we can clearly see that these two are identical. And in this case, this simple molecule forms a mirror image that's identical to it. So we can't call these enantiomers because, well, they're the same exact thing. There's no difference between them. So why do we even need to name them as separate things? So here is where the enantiomers actually come in. Because in this case, you can see that, again, we took our original, you know, simple molecules and we have the original one and its mirror image right here. And these two are identical as shown before. However, here we have actually two enantiomers. So these two molecules, they're mirror images of each other, quite literally. You can see that they are um, mirror images. If you look at them, it looks as if this one was a reflection of this one. But what exactly makes them mirror images and what exactly makes them different? So here is how I'll show you. So we can see that in this case, yes, these two are quite similar to these two right here. So what the mirror did right here, it did flip these two all the way here. So we can see this yellow and this red right here. Yeah. This, um, try and show it right here. So this yellow and this red, they flipped right here onto the mirror image. So they're just like this. You can literally juxtapose them right here. They look identical. Yeah. So the mirror did flip a part of the enantiomer, this yellow and this red portion. But here is where the catch lies, because the, while this portion you know, this red and yellow portion, red and yellow portion got flipped, this purple and this green portion, they stay identical here and here. And what does that mean? That means that the entire molecule did not get flipped in the mirror. That means that only a part of this molecule got flipped, specifically this yellow and this red. Those were the only ones that actually got flipped to this, to this right here just like this got flipped to this. Um, this got flipped to this, this got flipped to this. But this purple and green, they stayed the same. So here, we actually saw the entire molecule get flipped over, you know? But in this case, we only saw part of the molecule get flipped over right here. While this backbone right here, this purple and green stayed identical. So that means this entire molecule, this entire enantiomer, it never got actually flipped over. 
it just had a part of it. This part right here, this yellow and this red, were the only ones that got flipped in the mirror image. While this backbone, purple and green, stayed the same. And since this entire molecule never got flipped, and since only a part of it got flipped, that means these two are fundamentally different molecules. And why is that? Well, it's because we flipped one of this, this part, relative to this part. So this part stayed identical of the molecule, while we rearranged these atoms to make a flip right here. So we flipped a part of a molecule while keeping another part identical. So we fundamentally altered the molecule because if we actually flipped the molecule, let's say, if we just take this out, right, say, yeah, we just flipped this molecule, let's say like this, yeah? Oh, this is the same as this. We're just flipping the same one back and forth. But this side will not be its mirror image though because that's not how mirrors work. Mirrors won't just flip it like this over. Instead, what a mirror would do, well, at least the mirror that I use and that you probably use, is that it will keep this part the same and it will only flip this yellow and this red over like this relative to this staying constant. So we flipped a part within the molecule, we altered something within the molecule, but we didn't actually flip the entire molecule. So that makes this mirror image different from this one because it has a flipped part that's different from this flipped part. You can see this yellow and this red are flipped right here, but these two are identical. It has a flipped part relative to the other part. And I will also show you how that fundamentally changes this molecule because um, let's pretend that we're standing on top of this purple, yeah? On this purple. We can see that the yellow will be to the right of us and the red will be to the left. And no matter how I flip it, you know, no matter how I flip it, as long as you're standing on top of this purple, and just looking this direction, this yellow will always be on your right, this red will always be on your left. Meanwhile, for this guy, it's different. If you're standing on top of this purple and all you're doing is just looking forward, this red will be on your right, this yellow will be on your left. And that's pretty different from here, you can see. So we can see how they're mirror images of each other pretty apparent actually just looking at this you can see the red and yellow got flipped but the purple and green stayed the same relative to each other and we can also see how this fundamentally changes the entire molecule because if we're standing on top of these purples let's say for this molecule the red will always be on our left but for this molecule the red will always be on our right so it doesn't matter how you flip them, as long as you're just facing this direction forward towards the red and yellow this red and this yellow, the positions will be forever changed relative to your standing right here. So these molecules are different and that's actually responsible for their different properties. Because let's say you are going to insert into some kind of a big enzyme, yeah? Let's say here on the wall, or let's say right here, there's an enzyme and you want to latch into it, yeah? If you're in this molecule, your yellow is forever going to be on your right. Your red's forever going to be on your left. That makes a difference in comparison to, let's say, this molecule, where your red is going to be always on your right, your yellow on your left. Unlike here, where red's on the left, yellow's on the right. So they're going to insert differently if they're facing, let's say, this direction, you know? Unless you want to make the red the same, right, say, on this molecule as in this molecule, then you're going to have to flip it, yeah? But now we see the issue is that the purple is going to be upside down. So that's not the same insert. So no matter how you're looking at it, if you're standing on top of this purple facing this direction, this red is going to be on one side always, and this yellow is going to be on the other side always. Same for this one. It's fundamentally different. So we can see that unlike for this one, where we took and flipped the whole molecule over, thus having an identical mirror image because it's literally just this molecule itself flipped over. In this case, we didn't actually flip the whole molecule over. 
That's why the mirror image is not identical. Because if we actually flip this whole molecule over, just like this, well, we can just easily flip it back. So that would be identical. But all we did was flip the part of the molecule to here while keeping the back the same. So we flipped a part relative to another part. We kept this part constant. We flipped this part relative to this one. And that actually changes the molecule. And that is what enantiomers are. That's what makes them fundamentally different, these enantiomers. And I really hope that this explanation helps you. And if you'd like some more explanations, please like this video or comment if you have any suggestions. Thank you.